Well, here's a topic we haven't talked about in quite a while because, quite frankly, Suicide Squad's a dead game, ladies and gentlemen. It is a dead game. It's been a dead game since inception. Once people found out exactly what this game is about and how terrible the live service actually is, nobody wanted to stick around. It has some player base on console, but really, it's few and far between. And the Steam player base, you guys already know, has dwindled to, like, what? I think the, the lowest I remember seeing was like 400 players, 300 players, something along those lines. Well, apparently, the new DLC came out recently for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and all the Sushi Squad people who would defend this game were saying, just wait till the Joker DLC drops. The game's going to get revived. People are going to come back. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bring everybody back to this game. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The DLC dropped, and the game is still dead. Put it in me. Mate, bloody hell! Now you've just made it weird! <sighs> we have an article here from That Park Place with a headline that reads, Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League Joker DLC appears to flop with concurrent players peaking at just over 3,000 on Steam. Now, this 3,000 number is the peak, ladies and gentlemen, the peak. And that peak is nowhere near the initial peak that they had when the game first launched. So now this number is probably back down to like 800, I believe, or something along those lines. The Joker did not bring that many people back, and the game is still overly just basically dead. So let's get into this article, guys, from that park place. But of course, before we do, if if you are new here, just consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into that YouTube algorithm. So it says Rocksteady released their first DLC for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League that features the Joker, and it appears to have been a complete flop based on current Steam players. Now, I believe, quote me if I'm wrong, I believe this DLC was free. Okay, I don't think they actually charged anything for this DLC. I could be wrong. I'm going to hopefully, maybe it says it in the article, but I believe it was free. Rocksteady announced uh, their first free content update. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that answered that right away. Their first free content update that includes a new take on the iconic supervillain Joker. It also introduces a new map that players can explore during incursion and mayhem missions. Rocksteady shared that the map is a version of Metropol uh, Metropolis infected with the twisted and warped mind of the Joker, creating a darkly comic reflection of the City of Tomorrow. It also introduced new gear, specifically the Scarecrow gear set that allows players to stack fear and horror on your enemies. There are also a number of other items that are available that come from various DC villains, such as the Mad Hatter, Polka Dot Man, and Reverse Flash. Now, again, all of this stuff, we know this should have been in the game, okay? They should have had the Joker in the game from the beginning. The reason why they didn't is because they were hoping they could either sell it to you down the line or get it to bring people back to the game because a live service game, the entire purpose of it is to keep players playing and to make sure they keep coming back. So they wanted to keep the Joker out of the main game to try to make it as a draw to get people to come back. I understand that. But ultimately... The problem is that you messed up. You messed up on the launch so bad that you lost 90% of your player base. It is pathetic, the numbers that are active right now for a game that just recently came out. I can understand that this game came out a year ago, but this game just came out recently, and it has a player base that's lower than some 5- to 10-year-old games. It's really sad. Furthermore, Rocksteady added a new weapon manufacturer, Intergang. It also revealed new outfits, banners, and poses for characters throughout the Season 1 Battle Pass, such as Wayne Tech outfits. Finally, they also report that the game will have a new Mayhem and Assault missions, as well as a new Incursion mission that is being called Combat Incursions. Rocksteady explains, These missions allow the squad to do what they do best, bash some cool on heads together however they see fit. The DLC officially arrived on March 28th and saw a marginal increase in concurrent players. According to Steam charts, concurrent players for the game peaked at 3,012 following the re release of the DLC. However, less than a week since the DLC release, that concurrent number fell to 1,183 on April 1st. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, this game is so dead. Just look at the chart. Look at the chart. You see the peak, right? When the DLC actually comes out and then it's back to being dead. It's dead. This game is dead. I said before many times, if the Joker DLC 
does not revive the game to anything close to the original all-time peak, this game is going to be dead. There's not much they're going to be able to offer that's going to want to bring people back. The only thing I can see them doing is maybe reviving the Justice League and bringing them back. But it's pretty damn sad if you need the Justice League in order to sell a game that's made for the Suicide Squad. It's just a joke, ladies and gentlemen. The entire thing is a joke. The game was ruined by the terrible storyline. It was ruined by the terrible live service aspect. Nobody wanted this nonsense, and they keep trying to push it because they want to milk gamers. They're greedy. We know that they're greedy. They want to milk gamers for every single dollar that they possibly can, and they're not going to stop because gamers, some gamers anyway, uh, are funding this stuff. The majority of live service microtransactions are funded by a small percentage of the player base and that small percentage is shelling out so much money that these developers are looking to make everything they can into a live service game to try to take as much money as possible as they can from gamers given that the peak concurrent players only reached a little over 3,000 and it quickly dropped off in less than a week it's hard to imagine that the game brought in any kind of significant revenue from selling season one battle passes it's likely safe to describe this season one dlc as a flop and this flop comes after warner bros discovery ceo david zasloff admitted that the game failed shortly after its release during the company's fourth quarter 2023 earnings webcast Zasloff said on the theatrical and gaming side, while we did have some real misses this year, we also had some really big wins, including Barbie, the number one movie globally, and the most successful movie in the history of Warner Bros. and Hogwarts Legacy, the biggest game of 2023. Now, the funny thing is, these two IPs that are your biggest successes, right? Hogwarts Legacy was a huge success. Biggest game of 2023, top selling game of the year. And yet nobody wanted to talk about it publicly because of the drama surrounding J.K. Rowling and the trans activists who are out there. My fellow trans people are out there right now attacking J.K. Rowling, and it's really ridiculous. It really is. Like, what they're attacking her for makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, and we know it doesn't. And then on top of that, Barbie. Everybody knew Barbie was going to pull in money. I didn't think it was going to pull in that much money, but we knew it was going to pull in money because, let's be real, Women, just like certain minority groups, will always support something they deem is uh, needing to be support. Otherwise, they're not they're not women. Right. So like Barbie was basically Black Panther for white women or women in general. It just was. It was like a lot of black people felt like they had to go see Black Panther because if they didn't. They weren't black. It was a joke that was going around at the time. And now it's the same thing with Barbie. Barbie had that same kind of kind of pull right if you didn't go see barbie then are you really a woman at this point like women wanted to go see something that they were connecting to as a kid every every woman that i ever known anyway had a barbie doll um to some extent whether it was a male barbie doll or the actual barbie doll it didn't matter they played with barbies and a lot of women felt that connection so they felt like they had to go see it i would be very curious to see if barbie too does anywhere near as much money as the first one. I think nostalgia really drove home Barbie 1. Uh, so I would really like to see a sequel for it to see what the numbers look like after the fact because I would almost bet it would pull a Captain Marvel and not do anywhere close to the first movie. But again, I could be wrong. It says later in the earnings call, the company's chief financial officer, Gunnar Wittenfels, admitted that this year's Suicide Squad, one of our key video game releases in 2024, has fallen short of our expectations since its release earlier in the quarter, setting our game's business up for a tough year over year comp in quarter one. So again, ladies and gentlemen, even Warner Brothers is admitting that Suicide Squad is a massive flop. It seems like only the diehard DC people refuse to want to let this game go. And honestly, it doesn't matter if they refuse to or not. I guarantee you within a year or so, it's going to follow the way of Marvel's Avengers and it's going to die a terrible death. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.